Hello and welcome to Unworthy History. Today we got some actual history for you from this book right here, Indian Depredations in Texas by J.W. Wilbarker, published all the way back in 1889. Now the story we're going to read about today takes place in Young County. The first story is called the Tackett Fight, and then we also hear about a couple of other battles that took place in Young County between the years of 1859 and 1864. The first pioneer preacher in Young County was Old Father Tackett, as he was familiarly called. He was one of the Methodist creed. He moved his family on Boggy Creek in the western portion of Young County. On the 15th of January, 1859, about 10 o'clock in the morning, one of his cows came up alone. He thought it strange that she would leave the bunch, and upon examination, found an arrow sticking in her neck. He and his three sons, Jim, George, and Lysurgis, arming themselves, each with a shotgun and a six-shooter, took the back trail of the wounded cow, which they could easily follow as the snow lay on the ground to the depth of several inches. They followed the trail for about two miles where they found the remainder of the herd at the foot of a very rough hill, to which the present occurrence gave the name of Tackett Mountain. Not daring to follow the Indians into such a place, they rounded up their little bunch of cattle and started for home. The Indians, observing them from the summit of the mountain, concealed themselves in a deep gulch which headed there, and running to where the path crossed it, they lay in ambush for their approach. The cattle became frightened at the crossing, and Lysurgis, thinking some wild animal was crouched there, cocked and presented his gun. At this moment the Indians sprang up, and Lysurgis shot the only one who had a gun. Eleven Indians more were left, and a general fight ensued. The Indians thought the Tackets were only armed with guns, and when they had emptied them, the bloodthirsty Indians threw down their bows, leaped from the gully, knives in hand, to make a charge for their scalps. The pistols were then for the first time drawn out, and with deadly effect. The Indians fled in great confusion, leaving four of their dead on the field of battle. Father Tackett and his son Jim were wounded slightly in the foot and eyebrow, respectively. They did not follow up their advantage and exterminate the whole marauding band, but returned home without being further molested. The old man lived in Young County until 1883, when he moved to Parker County, and in 1887 he died. Jim Tackett now has a large cattle ranch up in the Texas Panhandle. A party in the spring of 1860 left Fort Belt Knapp and the settlements close by to gather cattle on Elm Creek. One day when they had been out about a week, on the 30th of April, Newhouse and a Mexican who were in the company were left on herd. The others were at their dinner when a small band of Indians attacked Newhouse and the Mexican. They made fight, but to no avail. Both men were killed, and although pursued by the remainder of the party, the Indians made good their escape. In the summer of 1861, a man by the name of Butoff left his clearing on Elm Creek in Young County, with a hide press taking it to Johnson County. Butoff was driving four yoke of oxen and had proceeded about 35 miles on his way to what is now called Dillingham Prairie. Here he was riding on the tongue of his wagon, wholly unsuspicious of danger, when a party of six Indians came upon him from behind and killed him. A Mr. Glassengem, who was horse hunting on the range, seeing the man was unconscious of the danger and thinking he would find a gun at the wagon, put spurs to his mule, intending to reach the spot before the Indians. The Indians rode fleet horses, and his mule was so slow that he found this impossible. So he faced about, thinking to reach his home on Rock Creek, a mile and a half distant. The Indians, after they had murdered Butoff, gave chase. They came with an arrow shot of him when in about half a mile of his house. Seeing they would soon overtake and slaughter him, he concluded to sell his life as dearly as possible, so he drew his revolver and faced them, cursing them with every breath. They stopped, laughed at his pluck and impudence, held a consultation, and retraced their steps to plunder the wagon of the murdered man. In the fall of 1863, a party of rangers belonging to Captain White's company, Colonel McCord's regiment, started to carry an express from Lost Valley to Fort Belknap. 
On their way, they came across four Indians. A man named Jim Dozer fired and killed one of the Indians with his rifle. Whilst he was reloading, the rest of the party, six or seven in number, continued the fight with their six shooters as they had no rifles, but failed to do any damage to the enemy. As soon as Mr. Dozer had reloaded his gun, he fired again and killed another Indian. The two remaining Indians then fled, and the men with six shooters pursued them. They finally succeeded after much firing and killing one of them, but the other escaped. Mr. Dozer killed two Indians with his rifle, whilst the rest of the party only killed one, which clearly proves the superiority of the rifle to the six-shooter, especially when in the hands of an experienced frontiersman and Indian fighter as Dozier. In the month of July 1864, Goodnight removed a bunch of cattle from Keechee Valley, going with them to the territories. On the second night of their drive, they camped at a place known as Fort Murray in Young County. In the company was a young man, Alfred Lane, a brother-in-law of Mr. Goodnight. While in camp here at Fort Murray, Lane dreamed that his father and mother, whom he had left at their home on Keechee Creek, had been massacred by the Indians, and it appeared to him so vividly that he determined to leave the trail and return. Goodnight reasoned with him, told him how hazardous the attempt, and how foolish his apprehensions were, but no, he must go. Nothing would satisfy him short of going back to sea. Alas, his vision led him to his doom. He had only gone some six or eight miles on his return when he was killed by a band of marauding Indians. When found, his body was at the foot of Cement Mountain, ten miles north of the town of Graham, horribly mangled as though the killing was not enough, but torture had to be resorted to to satisfy their vicious cravings. So that's the end of this story. This started with a Tackett fight. That was actually a successful defense on the settlers' part. And then it also detailed a few other battles that took place in Young County between the years of 1859 and 1864, concluding with this unfortunate tale of a man who had a dream that his father and mother were being massacred, and it led him to go out and he was massacred himself. So if you want to hear more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.